design practice. Right, my name is Gary Azeltine, and I am a recently retired police detective in England, having served almost 24 years with the British Transport Police. For the majority of that time, for 20 years, I was a detective. I was dealing at the sharp end of evidence, evidential matters, having been involved in murder, manslaughter, rape, etc., etc. I come to this subject on an evidential basis, and I think that is very necessary in this field. I am here principally to speak on behalf of police officers worldwide who have witnessed UFOs, but I would also like to say that I'm also one of the principal investigators of the Rendlesham Forest incident that my colleague Peter has alluded to, along with Linda Moulton Howe, I would consider as the three principal investigators of this incident. We're all doing very good work on it. For the last five years, I have worked with Colonel Charles Holt, the man who wrote the Holt Memorandum, the deputy base commander of what was absolutely a nuclear facility and let me back that up by saying that for three years of my six years in the Royal Air Force between 1983 and 1989 I served on two nuclear bases doing exactly the same job as what those US Air Force policemen did and the base at Bentwater is identical to the base that Ari Flybrook in West Germany where I worked so let's cut the crap this is a nuclear issue right in January 2002, moving to my police background, I created the Police Reporting UFO Sightings Database. It's commonly referred to as the Proof Force Police Database. You have an information pack with that uh, information. It's basically there for UK police officers to record on and off duty police sightings. Believe me, the, over the 11 years of my research, Nothing will surprise me what anybody says in this field about what they report. It is truly extraordinary. When I began my research 11 years ago into British police officers, there were approximately six cases involving 10 officers. 11 years later, I now have over 425 cases involving over 940 British police officers. This is a significant amount, in my opinion. These sightings have taken place the length and breadth of Britain and have been reported at all times of the day. Whilst I'm not a big lover of statistics because they can be manipulated, I would say that the key st uh, statistic for me is that over 70% of these cases are multiple witness officer cases. Therefore, it is significant corroboration to a sighting event. Again, I look at this case through evidential eyes. In one particular case, there is in excess of 24 police officers that were involved in tracking at least one object over six counties of Britain on the night of March the 30th, 31st, uh, 1993. This is referred to as the Cosford incident. Many police officers have observed structured craft of huge size and proportions in close proximity to their ground positions. These craft range in shape and size and dimensions from many tens of feet to many hundreds of feet in size. Many of the police cases on the database, in my opinion, are truly extraordinary. For example, in October 1984, near RAF Northolt in Middlesex, a silent black triangular object was seen at low altitude by two uniformed police officers on mobile patrol, while they, which they described as being the size of three football fields. When I sought to clarify this uh, description of size, they said when they saw it, it was above three football fields. So I think that's a pretty good representation of size. This report was made by Police Constable Robin Perry of the Metropolitan Police. On another occasion in October 1978, three uniformed police officers in a rural area of Buckinghamshire observed a huge object, which they described as a size of a football field, which suddenly and silently materialised in front of them in the blink of an eye and at relative close proximity to their position. However, there were also a number of smaller objects flying around the large main object, akin to a mothership kind of scenario, and the larger object then projected a beam down to the ground, which was the width of the football field, which then traversed the ground as if scanning the terrain for several minutes. They watched for this event for approximately five minutes before suddenly it went off and dematerialized in the blink of an eye. One second it was there, and then it was gone. 
and this has been described as like switching on a light bulb on and off. Not something that I think our stealth capability is quite capable of yet. The source of that report is the police constable Eric Raymond, retired of the Thames Valley Police. Many officers have seen objects that appear to move in ways that seem to defy our laws of known physics and aerodynamics. For example, in May 1981 or 1982, two firearms officers were involved in the close protection of what was then a very prominent conservative uh, minister uh, in a rural location in North Yorkshire. At approximately 5.30 hours in the morning, as they were walking in the grounds of this uh, residence, they suddenly became aware that the sunshine had darkened, the sky had darkened. When they looked up to establish the cause of that, they were amazed to see a huge, dark, purple, cylindrical object with a pronounced undercarriage un underneath it that was described as being the length of a football field, a common figure in all of this, uh, and hovering silently above the house at an altitude of only two to three hundred feet, which is extremely close. The object remained motionless, silent, above the house for five to ten minutes before it suddenly and silently accelerated in the blink of an eye out to the horizon, where it stopped in an instant for a few seconds and then disappeared towards the horizon and out of sight. The source of this report is Police Sergeant Retired John Pawson of the North Yorkshire Police. In my introduction I mentioned that I would refer to police officer sightings worldwide and in the time permitted I would like to draw your attention to just two particular countries where numerous police officer sightings have taken place. Namely I refer to the United States and Belgium. Many of the U.S. cases are simply outstanding, and I will highlight just two of them. Just after midnight on the 14th of December 1994, 15 police officers of Trumbull County, Ohio, observed multiple circular UFOs from different geographical positions. In one particular sighting, the engine of the police vehicle driven by Sergeant Toby Malaro suddenly cut out. When he got out of the vehicle, he looked up and a UFO was directly above him, shining a beam down. As soon as the, ve the object moved away, his engine restarted and he attempted to a short pursuit. On the 5th of January 2000 in Illinois, multiple police officers observed a large triangular craft that was witnessed from many geographical positions and was sometimes seen in close proximity to their ground locations. Broadly speaking, all the officers involved in both of these incidents described craft that moved in silence, which were able to make incredibly high-speed maneuvers unlike that of any known aircraft. Finally, in the skies above Belgium between 1989 and 1991, hundreds of police officers observed large triangular objects all over the country. Many of these sightings involved multiple police officer witnesses and were frequently seen at close proximity to their ground locations. In addition, many of these sightings were confirmed on multiple civilian radar and multiple military radar facilities. In the allotted 10 minutes given to brief you, which I'm trying to keep to, I would like to say on behalf of police officers worldwide that they are seeing actual structured craft, physical in nature, and which move in ways that they have never seen before or since. In closing, I urge this panel to accept their collective testimonies as genuine and that they offer compelling circumstantial evidence that many of these sightings represent extraordinary, unknown structured craft moving in the Earth's airspace. In closing, and on a personal note, I believe that the time is now to lift the veil of secrecy that has shrouded this subject for over 60 years, and the subject of UFOs should now be openly accepted in the mainstream media as being real in nature, and which in turn would allow people to come forward from all walks, all life, all countries, without the fear of ridicule, and a risk to their careers. As a police detective of many years service, I believe that the collective testimonial, documentary and physical evidence obtained in, obtained in over 60 years of UFO research overwhelmingly confirms that some, and I repeat the word some, UFO sightings do represent an ongoing extraterrestrial engagement with planet Earth. 
I am deeply honoured to be here before you today and thanks Steve Bessett so much. But I also thank you, the panel, for being courageous in coming forward at some, probably some cost to yourselves in your reputation. But you are, and whether the mainstream media are here or not, this is historic and it will be looked back as an historic event and you will be congratulated in time for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, investigative detective. I just want to underscore that your passion uh, really underscores the significance of your testimony. I am very passionate, as you can see. And, and, that's, and that's a worthy, that's a, that's a virtue.